So guys, welcome back to the channel. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I blew a rear brake line. That's the one in the middle that goes from the, the body of the car down to the diff. Now it wasn't real flash. I had a bit of loss of brakes coming up to the traffic lights there, but I did the bush mechanic fix and I got home. So what I'm gonna do now is that I blow on one hose. So that kind of makes me think that the rest of the hoses are gonna be in about the same condition. Now I don't wanna experience that again. So what I've done is I've gone and bought a full set of hoses to put right through. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to put all the hoses onto the car. So we've got the two H1727 hoses and one of these is open here. Now these are my front brake hoses. They're a universal fit. They've got the little uh, roll pin in there. Uh, they'll, they'll either go uh, that way or that way, universal fit. I have these two, which are my rear brake lines for the, the back wheels here. Now these ones are a specific fit. So this one is the left hand and this one is the right hand. So they, if you're ordering them, you have to get the specific left and right hand. Then I have the two hoses, and this one I had to get made up um, because I've got the two inch lift, I need the extended hoses. Now they were struggling to get it, so they made this one up for me. Uh, this one here is the back, and this one here is the front. So I'll be replacing everything. Now just remember, if your model has ABS, you will have an extra brake hose. So the kit will have seven, instead of six hoses on your car and they are a different hose so you need to make sure that you order the correct kit for your car i don't have abs my car's an older car hence why i've got these hoses so here under the car now the first one i'm going to do is the one at the back which is the one that has blown so i'm going to remove my dodgy hack here which got me home So as you can see here, my slightly dodgy fix to get home on the split hose there, not real flash. Um, I'm gonna take this off, give this a bit of a clean up and uh, replace this hose. Now hopefully it don't get rained on with brake fluid. There we go. You can see the, uh, see the split there. It's uh, quite a decent one, but I was able to clamp it off and uh, get home now because it's extremely filthy i don't want dirt getting in the brake line i'm going to give it all a, a good clean with a wire brush So while I'm cleaning, I'm going to do the other end as well, on top of the dip here. So just here, there's a little clip that holds the whole thing assembly in there. So, see if I can just work that down like that. There's that little clip. Just a little U spring clip that holds it in. Now make sure you don't lose that. You'll need it when you put it back together. Now that allows the brake line to move like that. Now you gotta do a little bit more cleaning up in there. So when I undo this union here, I could have brake fluid come out, so I'm ready to catch that in the bottle, hopefully. Right, so what I have is I have a 17 mil there, and I have a 10 mil on the bottom. Now, I am expecting that, and there's a bit of muck just there that I don't want. I want that nice and clean. I'm hoping I don't get brake fluid rain down on top of me. <clears throat> I 
And I just had a thought. Now, I took this little clip out just before, but it's going to be a whole lot easier to undo these having it in there. So, there's a little mistake I just did. There it goes. Now, I'm starting to get brake fluid there. I'm just going to be back. Um, going to cut the top off my bottle. Okay, so back. I originally thought that I would be able to just have um, stick that in the end of the bottle, but obviously not the way. There we are. I think we're nearly finger tight now. So I'm dripping the brake fluid. I'm going to sit my catch bucket down the bottom there. Now. Pull that little clip back off, don't lose it, and we've got a brake line is free. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this one out of the bag, my back, um, hopefully you can see that, and I'm going to screw it on, which will give me the... So, this is our split wire. I'm having a bit of fun getting the camera up in there. So once again, 17. Okay, so the way these hoses go back on is you need to make sure you screw up the one on the diff first because it requires you to turn turn the whole hose like so. Once again, 17 to tighten it up. Once you've done that, you can then connect this one up. Now I've filed this already to make sure it will go in. So pop the little clip back on. Got some dirt on the thread there. I do not want that. Now what I'm doing is I'm using a smaller tool here to put some pressure on the back to just help that to start screwing in. Now would be a great time to have a ratchet to ratchet open ender. Nice and tight. There's the center back brake line done. Let's move to a wheel. Okay. So now we've done the center front, I'm moving to the back right here. So we've got here and here, which is our hose, which um, doesn't get much flex or anything, but I'm still going to replace it anyway. So, a bit of a clean up. If I can get it in there.
Now, we have here our right hand hose, and you can see why, why they're left and right, because this kick here actually has the angle. So the hose comes down and goes in like that. So, yeah, let's put it on. So, we have 14 mil. Now it is likely to weep a little bit of brake fluid here. Move my hand so you can see. So we've just taken out that bolt from the top here. Now it does have a copper washer there, which is a squash washer. Uh, it takes up the there I'm going to be replacing them and putting new ones on so as I go give that a nice clean now you can see that that's copper it's not a normal steel bolt I have my little pack of washers there. So I've put my new washer on, ready to go. Now I'll put the new washers, you put the new washers on because they'll, they'll actually squash and take up imperfections. Just giving it a nice clean. So yeah, just here's where I've removed the copper nut, 17, if we can get it on there, and a 10, and hopefully, there it goes. Okay, before I get that fully out, because it's going to be pointing up, I'm going to pull off this and here I am, I'm going to pull off this little clip I thought I was just going to pull off this little clip Now I'm hoping we don't have the same problem with the burring on this one. Now that just popped out down the front there. Don't know if you can see it. So just here that's your, where your brake line goes in. It gives a wobble, it pops off just like that. Now you can see there's a little retainer clip for it to locate on. Good idea to give that a bit of a clean with a rag. So yeah, just gonna give that seat there a clean without getting it up inside the, the center, because don't want any of that muck going inside brake cylinders. So, new hose, we put that end in into our little lock there that I just showed you. Before we do that, and I nearly forgot this, on the other side of the, the lock, so we've got our bolt that will go down through that side and we've already placed a rewash, copper washer on that side. We've got a copper washer on the other side there too. You can just see it. I don't know if it'll come off, it's, there it is. So make sure you replace that one as well. So that will go on, a bit of muck, that will go on first. So new washer, nut, 
new washer, copper washer, and then that all screws in. Don't forget to locate the pin, and sorry about my hands here, it's a little bit awkward to show you. So we have our copper washer, we have our new brake line with the little clip, new copper washer, and then our brake bolt goes in like that. And then we do it up nice and firm. And then we go to the other end where hopefully bit of muck there. Don't want that muck in it. Hopefully this won't be like the other one. And it will just screw up nice and easily. Now better idea to do that with a hammer rather than your open ender but oh well. So that's interesting, the new ones have just come with a flat that is a 15 rather than a hex on top there. So there we go, right hand side brakes done, let's go to the left. So we'll see if this side doesn't go a bit clean, quicker, a bit cleaner, a bit quicker. So you can see a bit easier here the copper nut that I was talking about. Now that was a lot easier to move than that other one on the other side. Probably could have just grabbed it with these. Now, something to keep an eye on, when this one's come off, the copper washer hasn't stayed on the brake line. So we need to knock that one off just there. There it goes. Just there, it was stuck, stuck down there. Now, we've got an interesting conundrum on this one. The uh, um, copper bolt is stuck to the brake line. Doesn't want to unscrew, so. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, now it's just come out like that. It just needed something to squash it slightly over there and away we go. So you can see all the black stuff on that. We'll clean all that off. Take our copper washer. New copper washer. New brake line. As you can see, this is bent the other way. to go into its little housing receptacle thing there. Um, I'll give this a bit of a clean, very careful not to put the muck in it. So wipe out, 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 and around. 
Now, we've got the copper washer on the bolt. It goes through that way, because remember we're on the other side of the car now. And our, give that a bit of rub with my fingers. Copper washer. I should do that so that you can see. Now I'm not happy with how dirty that is, so give that a bit of a clean up. Again, wiping so that it doesn't wipe the muck inside. I'm sure someone will comment with me using my 17mm socket as a hammer. And that's how they should go back on with no hassle at all. There we go. Now, don't forget to tighten this one up, otherwise you'll be in a world of trouble. There we go. Now, I'll put the wheels back on the back and jack up the front and we'll do the front. Okay, so that brings us to the front. Now you can see a little bit different, the hose here does have flex as the swivel hub turns from side to side. So it's a little bit more awkward, we've got to get round the back there and here. So we'll give it a clean. Now I've chosen to do the front right first because it's longest from the, the brake reservoir. And then I'll work, I'll do the other side and then I'll do the one that comes from the dip. So a bit of a clean up. Now this line will still have a little bit of brake fluid in it. Not sure why, but my ratchet stopped ratcheting. There we go. So that's loose. Next we go down in here. It's a bit hard to see there with the, the shock in front of it. Now I'm backwards here, so we're going that way. That is tight. Okay, so as that's starting to round, what I've done is I've got a, a rusty old 10 mil laying around in the shed and I've cut the top out of it you can see just there so that it will slide over the brake line and hopefully it's going to give me better purchase nope it's just rolling around on it There it goes. So, little trick for you. A ring spanner, cut the end out, slide it over, and then clamp it with some vice grips. If you're starting to strip the thread. Now it's gonna go finger tight. So, trying to do it so you can see, I'm just going to tap that little retaining clip there.
little retaining clip, don't lose it. And out it comes. Right there now, as we finish unscrewing our big copper nut. Try the trick that we did last time. So, what I'm doing is I've just gripped that washer with the vice grips there, keeps coming off, and I'm unscrewing it with my fingers. There we go, now it comes. Now you can see they're a universal. Make sure we take the copper washer, lost my screwdriver, make sure we take the copper washer, this one's stuck on here, so get that out, fitting there a clean up, so there it is, copper washer, comes off, give this copper nut a clean up. bag we're out of the bag comes our new one now remember the fronts are a universal so new copper washer and I've gone backwards because our locating pin is on the outside just there so new copper washer nut new copper washer I'll see if I can do that so you can see. And you can see the little roll pin here locates in to stop it, stop it turning. There we go. Now this one comes around out our hole out the back there. And then our retainer clip will go back. Retainer clip will will go back in. Then the little thing that caused us trouble before. Now screwing up beautifully, I'll use my nicely made tool here. seems I'm going to have to tighten it up with these again so device grips There we go. Now, the last thing is to make sure we tighten 
this one back up because once again disaster if we don't nice and firm just like that now other side here we go right oh so left front bit of a clean we'll see if we can't do this one a bit quicker hopefully Can. And I've just taken that off and forgotten that I need to undo this. So once again, that's too tight, so I'm going to use my little ring cut open that I've made up and the vice clamps. There it goes. Now you think with all the money I make off YouTube, I'd buy some new tools. I don't actually make that much money off YouTube. So please like, share, subscribe my videos, and I might be able to afford to buy some new tools. This one here is actually getting tighter as it comes out so I'm hoping I don't have to get in with the file and adjust it like I did the back one. I think that's actually open out there now. Take out the clip, pull our hose off right here. That way, so you can see. Now, just this one I can just hold and unscrew the copper washer. I may just need a slight bit of coaxing. Clean up our hole. Now our new brake hose, and as again I said, the fronts are universal, um, so it will go on that way, because the little thing's there, and the other side does exactly the same thing, it's only a locator. Now 
I've got the two final washers. So one on that side, one on that side. Now carefully through our hole. Put our retainer back on. And sorry that there's a shock absorber in the way here. So I'm having the same problem that it doesn't want to get started. So I've just pulled that off again so that I've got a bit of freedom in the movement. I'll see if I can get a better angle. So I've pulled the back off because it doesn't want to, to get started. So by doing that, I've got that little bit of wiggle room there. There we are, we've got that thread started now. That will do up. Because of the bird thread, I'm having a little bit of hassle getting my open ender off. There we go, nice and tight. Now we've done the other one over here. Just give it a check. Yep, there we go. So we're good to go. Now we've got to do the middle hose just here. So that's the next one we'll do. Right, we're here at the front brake line that comes down to the diff. And this one's going to be a little bit more challenging due to where it's located. We've got to undo up the top here, but we've got to undo down here. Now remember, same as the back one on the diff, the thread here the hose screws so I can't undo this end until I undo the top end so I've got to take this off and then we take the hose off and then we screw it on here and up to there so let's get rid of a bit of muck from up here and you can see it all pouring down there so we're here at the front brake line now we have to take it off here and take it off here but remember that this one here has to unscrew out that one has your thread that you can screw on while it's locked in position now it looks like it's going to be easier to take this off here so we'll give it all a, a bit of a clean Now it helps if I pick up the right tool. 
Now that's extremely tight there and that bracket is soft and I'm pulling it. I don't want to bend the hose up there. So we'll give it a bit of bit of WD. And let that sit for a little bit and uh, see what else we can come up with to get that off. Okay, so I've cut a section of video out here. This nut was way too tight to undo. So what I've ended up doing is putting a clamp over the top there to hold this. And Dad, I'm lucky that Dad has a lathe. And he's made up this out of a, a single hex um, socket with a nut on the back that he's drilled out in the lathe. And we've cut it out. So it goes on. like that and then hopefully we can get to it to turn it which I can't So um, that little thing that Dad made up for me worked quite well. Uh, the hexagon, single hexagon socket cut off at the tip with a nut welded on the back and then lathed hold through the middle. So now it's loose enough and we probably will get some brake fluid out of here. Now, we've got to take off this little clippy-do thing. I wonder how tight it is. Ooh, it's coming. Again, put that somewhere safe. Now, we're highly possibly get brake fluid or not now bit of a twisty turly curly but we can just bring that out like so now we're gonna undo this one this one here which if everything stays true to what it has been so far, it should be 17. <laughs> and there it goes. Pop. Now we can unscrew it just like that okay I'm gonna move out from under the car now so what I've done is I've got it here in the vise and uh, just gonna try whoops sorry about the video there I'm holding the camera um, and uh, loosen that so that we can unscrew from our old brake line. Okay, now we remember we've got to screw this on first, but before we do that, I'm putting this end back in here Now, it goes that way, 
So when you take it off, make sure you remember which way it, it goes in. So that piece will go into there. And I will just nip it up here. So that's now ready to go back in. We screw this end in first. So making sure our end is nice and clean. Should start, there it goes. There we go. Now, we get to do our fancy little twisty maneuver. Around like that. Then this will pop back up in there like so going nice and easy and finger tight now now before it gets too tight I'm going to put the clip back in nice and firm like that and then tighten this up and here we go nice and tight so we've got that one tight we've got the top one tight we've got a new extended brake hose for the two inch lift which actually looks a little bit long but that's the one that was came from the parts parts shop so that's the one that's in there um yep so up here just to show you what i've did and if i can get it out without going up there i had that clamped over the top to hold this so that I could get the pressure on that without bending everything else so yeah good little way as I said if I start making enough money off YouTube I may be able to buy some myself some more tools if not I hope you're enjoying my videos now I purchased three bottles of Valvoline brake fluid dot three everything's been screwed up and what we need to do now is refill it with brake fluid because it's not going to work without that. Then we have to bleed the system. So I'm filling that right up. And then we can start the bleeding process. Well, there you have it. All I have to do now is to bleed the brakes, continue filling them up. Now just remember that when you bleed the brakes, this time it's not like bleeding them normally. You're going to get a lot of air come through the system because there's no fluid anywhere in the system. It's all pretty much drained out. There may be a few little um, patches where it's going to come through and you think you've got it. Keep going until you are sure there is no air in the system. You can tell this by the, the spongy brakes. When you put your foot on the brake, it'll feel spongy. Now, if you do want to know how to do the brake bleed, go back, have a look at my other videos. There's a brake fluid flush video, which will show you exactly what to do when you need to bleed your brakes. I'm going to get stuck into this now and uh, get mine bleeded and get this back on the road. Guys, hope you've enjoyed the video on how to change your brake lines. Just remember, you do need to bleed your brakes at the end of this video. 
just putting fluid in the top tank does not suffice. You will need to bleed the brakes properly. Check out my other video. Like, share and subscribe. See you around on Facebook. On Facebook? On YouTube. I am on Facebook too. But see you around on YouTube.